Hello everyone, it's Benny, and welcome back to the 3D game programming tutorial series. Last time, we got our motion integrators in place, that part is done, and we should be moving on to the world of collision detection and collision resolution. But we're not, quite yet. This video, we're going to take a slight break because at this point, our main.cpp file is getting pretty crowded. It's almost 450 lines. So we're going to refactor all the stuff we have. It doesn't belong in main.cpp. That wasn't the point. The point is, as you'll see in the video, all this stuff has sort of a natural organization to it. And I want to show that off because that's kind of cool. Just simply using this automatically naturally guides you towards a certain way of organizing your code. So I thought I'd show that off, and you'll see we're much closer to an organized code base by the end of the video, not even by doing anything that complicated. Let's do it. So first up is the motion integrators. This is going to be really easy because it's already really well isolated. It's as simple as just moving it to a new file. So we're going to create motion integrators.hpp. What we're going to do is we're going to pragma once, of course, and we're going to include math slash vector.hpp because, well, this uses vectors. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut and paste. There you go. All done. Only thing is, in main.cpp, we need to include motion integrators.hpp. And yeah, there we go. It's as easy as that. Actually, the one small thing is we should probably add the inline keyword in here just to avoid compiler errors in case there's multiple definitions or whatnot. There you go. That's it. Next up, we have a whole bunch of components, and I'm going to temporarily skip these because I want to refactor the game render context first. So this is going to be really simple. We're going to have game render context.hpp. Yeah, not much to this at all. Pragma ones. And this is pretty much, we're just going to move the code in here. So cut and paste. And beyond that, we just need to make sure we have the right include. So we need render device and render target, which I can get with by just including render context. I need the draw params, which I think I get from render context as well. I need shader, sampler, I believe I get those, yes. And I need matrix, so I will need to include math slash vec. Actually, don't I have like a universal vec math include for everything? No, that's not what vec math is for. Okay, never mind. I, I was confused. I thought. Okay, I could have sworn I had some include in here somewhere for everything in math, but I guess not. So I'm just going to take the simple way out and include math slash transform, because that should include just about everything we need. And I think that is, in fact, everything we need. So there we go. We should have game render context. We should now be able to include game render context at HPP, and we should be good. All right, I tested it. This does work. Couple things though. I want to put this in line simply to avoid compilation errors. And flush should probably be in, you know, it should probably not be in line. It should probably be in its own file. So I'm going to create game render context.cpp. It's going to include, guess what? Game render context.hpp. Who would have thought? And now we're going to take the flush method and yeah, copy and paste. Just need to put game render context, flush, and we're done. Other than the fact that we need to change the header, but you know, this is all we need in the CPP file. There we go. And flush can now just be void, nothing odd to it. And now come the components. How do we do this? Well, there's a few ways we could do it. We could do it the very simple way of just one header file for every component and every system. That's totally valid. You could do that. I think that's 
probably a little bit overkill. I think there's a little bit of a better way to do it. So that's what I am going to be taking care of right here. Here's the thing. You might notice there's a bit of a pattern. With the exception of the transform component, right now, every component we have pretty much has one primary system taking care of it. Sure, we might use the movement control component in multiple places. We might use it in the player and so maybe the menu and s some other things. But the primary thing handling it is the movement control system, right? Same story for the renderable mesh component, especially the mega cube component, and even the motion component, though that could arguably change as we write more of the code. So what we're going to do is for our primary, for most things, I'll, I'll say it that way, for most things, we're going to keep the component and its primary system in the same file. So, and to do this, to make this a little more organized, I'm going to create a folder for this that I'm going to call game CS for game component system. Like we have entity component system, we also have game CS for the game's component systems, components and systems. So, let's start, sure, with renderable mesh. That's a fair way to start. Or, I'll move the control compose slightly above. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. So, renderable, lowercase, mesh, dot HPP. And, very simple, we're going to include, sorry, we are going to include something, but first we're going to prag more ones. We're also going to include ecs slash ecs.hpp and I'm also going to take the lazy way out and include the render context to just get all the rendering nonsense out of the way. And now I can move renderable mesh component in here. And really at that point we should be able to just move in renderable mesh system as well. Ooh, and this makes it a lot easier because now I can just include game render context.hpp. And there you go. Now we have the renderable mesh component and the renderable mesh system. And honestly, this should have everything we need in it. So there you go. We've taken care of renderable mesh. So that's awesome. Of course, now I will need to include it here, but you know, same principle. There we go. Next up, movement control component. So movement control dot HPP. Guess how this is going to work? First of all, we're going to pragma once, always pragma once. Bad things happen when you do not pragma once. So there you go, movement control component. And we're also gonna move in, you guessed it, the movement control system. Pretty, this part's pretty straightforward. But you see, it's a nice system of organization for these types of components, which are primarily used by one system. And what do I need to include? Of course, I need to include ECS slash ECS dot HPP. And I believe I also need to include math slash transform dot HPP. But I believe that's it, so I'm gonna leave it there. Also, make sure you spell clue correctly. That's That would be bad otherwise. But yeah. So what I'm going to do is, once again, I'm going to include it. And by this point, you should probably be seeing the pattern. All right. I went ahead and did the motion system and component and Megacube system and components off screen because it's the exact same principle as before. I'll just go ahead and show you. So motion component, same thing. It's in the motion file. And as motion component and motion system, there you go. Only trick is you do want to include motion integrators.hpp. And for Megacube, same sort of thing. Just copy the component and the system and the renderer, because it actually has two primary systems that use it. But I consider that acceptable for this general paradigm because, well, these are gonna be the only two component or yeah, these will be the only two systems that use it. So I think that's alright. But yeah. Only trick is we do need to include motion integrators and game render context.hpp. So that just leaves our transform component, 
which is a little bit of an anomaly because it doesn't have one central system using it. It's used by a lot of different systems. So what do we do for components like this? For components like this, I consider these utility components. And they match th that exact definition. They're used by a lot of different systems, and there's no one central system that's like, oh, this is the transform system. This is the big reason this component exists. No. It's just used by a lot of different things for various purposes. And for those components, I'm going to go ahead and put them in utilcomponents.hpp. And same principle. So remember, pragma once, always pragma once. It's bad to pragma more than once. And include math slash transform.hpp. And oh, I almost forgot, of course, the important ECS slash ECS.hpp. And there we go. That is our transform component. Yeah. The one final trick to it is, I believe, every single one of these, except Megacube, uses this in some way. Yes, this uses transform components, so I need to include utilcomponents.hpp in basically every single one of these files. So that's in renderable mesh. In movement control, same thing, need utilcomponents. I don't need to copy the new line character. Under motion, thank you for bringing that up for me. Util components, there we go. And I'm pretty confident Mega Component doesn't use it, but I'll check. Yeah, doesn't use it. Okay. So there you go. That is all of our systems and components now neatly organized. So with that, we now have all our entities and components neatly organized. It's not clogging up the main.cpp file anymore. That is awesome. But there's one more thing in the main.cpp file that's a real eyesore. How on earth could we clean up this terrible, monstrous run app method? Find out next time! I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned, and I will see you all in the next video. Don't forget, there's an awesome Benny Discord in the description. Don't forget you can become a patron to get early access to videos. And a very special thank you to the patrons listed in the video description for making these videos possible. Thank you all, I will see you in the next video.